What's going on YouTube? Today we're going over an old vulnerability that affected Windows Active Directory. The vulnerability was discovered by Microsoft and given the name MS14068. Um, it affected a component of Windows Active Directory. The component is PAC. So what's PAC? PAC is or stands for Privilege Attribute certificates now that component that component normally uh, you need um, every user has a pack so let's say you have four users um, we have admin and we have James and we have let's say um, Dan all right so basically, every one of these users, when they sign in to Active Directory, they will be presented with a ticket from the Kerberos, or let me say it, KDC. I'm going to assume you know the, uh, the terminology, so KDC, the Key Distribution Center. The Key Distribution Center will issue a ticket, right, for every one of these users when they want to sign in. So let's say here we have TGT. And then the users will send something called pack. The pack in here contains information about the user roles, contains information about the groups, and of course permissions. So And of course, when, of course, the key distribution center signs this pack to make sure that the user is actually using the correct pack. So normally the P, the pack is signed uh, with secret key to ensure that it actually contains the right permissions for every user. When that vulnerability was discovered, it affected Windows Active Directory, Windows Active Directory 2012, 2000 three and maybe 2013 as well all of these versions of windows active directory were affected by that vulnerability now how the exploitation works so basically an exploit was released at the time and it used um a, a, a way where you can create a forged pack okay forged pack what's the uh, objective of that so basically let's say a user called dan now dan he's an attacker and he will create a forged pack when dan creates a forged pack uh, they will assume the role of admin and then they will send that to the kdc the KDC or the Key Distribution Center will check the pack and it finds that this pack or the pack that was created by Dan uh, actually contains admin permissions, right? Um, so the KDC will grant admin access to Dan and Dan now is an admin. That's how the, that how the, that's how the exploit works actually, guys. Now, fortunately, the exploit or the vulnerability was fixed and every single version of these 2013 3 and 12 uh, contains or has an update so if you i don't think uh, anyone who is running these versions of windows active directory has not yet updated but if you didn't update that's a kind reminder to update now let's switch to the practical side of this um, uh, video all right so now if you want to read more about this vulnerability you can take a look at this article digging into ms 14 068 exploitation and defense 
And if you take a look at the Microsoft Bulletin about this vulnerability, you can take a look uh, at that here. It explains totally the concept of the vulnerability and affected software, of course, and the hotfix. And lastly, um, I'm going to tell you guys how was that vulnerability exploited. We will use a tool called goldenpack.py to generate the forged pack. So now you understand where did the pack come from. It, come, it came from the fact that in order to exploit this vulnerability, we will need to generate a fake pack that tells the key distribution center, I am the admin user. Well, in fact, I am not. All right. And as an example, I'm using a cool machine from Hack the Box. The machine name is Mantis. And I found that machine a great example of demonstrating that vulnerability. So let's hop in. So to start with, I did an nmap scan on the machine and actually I found that the machine really was running Active Directory judging by the ports. So as you can see, we have uh, first port 53, Microsoft DNS, and it's saying Windows Server 2008 or 2 Service Pack 1. So 2008 is definitely within the vulnerable range. And as I can see, a port 88, which tells me that Kerberos is running and of course you see LDAP which is the Microsoft Active Directory L protocol 389 and um, we have also an HTTP port running on a HTTP service running on board 1337 and as, as you can see we also have a Microsoft SQL server 2014 running on board 1433 and here we get information about or we get DNS information about the machine. As you can see, the computer name is Mantis, and the do DNS domain name is http.local. The computer name in this case is mantis.http.local. So we're gonna make sure to add these to the host file. Anything else? So, the purpose of this video, as I said, will demonstrate the exploitation of that vulnerability. Now, as all of you know, this machine has many walkthroughs. If you find something uh, not very well explained uh, you can just uh, research um, then I did directory search on the web server running on port 1337 and I found out that I have two directories orchard and secure notes so let's over, head over there and see what do we have This is the official page of Microsoft Internet Information Services. Now um, let's explore the directory. So we take that secure notes. So as you can see, we have uh, two directories. Let me get back to my command line. Seems like we are gonna have some decoding work. So the first thing is web config. If you're gonna click on that, it uh, not found dev notes download orchard CMS download SQL server 2014 create user admin so see you see here it reveals information about the username so now you get the first thing the username is admin and the type of software is orchard CMS running on SQL server 2014 launch browser and navigate to uh, set admin password and configure SQL server now this is what we want now just take a note that the username is admin. Uh, we get back, we see here there is a string, base 64 string. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab this and use base 64 to decode the string. So base64-d or let me echo the string first, echo. Okay, that would do it. Let's first cancel the old string I have and then paste this one. So we're gonna cancel the text extension and enter. So that is the resultant or the output. So definitely this is hex, right? So we're gonna also need to decode that into a plain text form. So for that, I'm going to use um, XSD. So basically we're gonna, what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna take that, I lost the mouse. Okay, so take this echo one more time and here we're gonna cancel that one based in the hex 
string and then here we type xst r p for decoding that so we got what seems to be a password so now actually by taking a close look at the string we see it's actually a ms sql password right uh, so we're going to connect we're going to use that password to connect to the sql server now bearing in mind that we have a microsoft sql server running it is not mysql so the way we connect will be different so microsoft sql server 2014 now in last in, in like uh, we did the video on uh, advent of cyber 3 from try hack me and it was about recovering a compromised microsoft sql server we used a tool called uh, squish to interact with microsoft sql server because normally we need to uh, launch the microsoft sql server client but fortunately there are other tools that would enable us to interact with the microsoft sql server from the command line so we have two methods to connect we have the squish or we have the ms sql client.py from impact now for this video i'm going to use msclient.py if you want to take a look at how we use skewish we can get back to uh, advent of cyber 3 i did a video on i'm going to put that in the video description all right never mind okay so let's first connect to the server the first thing i'm gonna mount i'm gonna need to access my impact tools for that reason i'm gonna need to mount the uh, share i have See the repo, see the impact, see the impact again, see the examples. Okay, so we're here. Now, paste that in, and here I'm gonna type the username. The username, we got that from the node, it was admin. Uh, the IP address, the IP address of the machine, we also got that here, so we're gonna copy that. Let's scroll down type this and connect let's see now uh, don't forget to specify the port on which uh, the SQL server is running so now we are prompt to type in the password since we got the password we're gonna copy that paste let's see we've got access all right so now we need to interact with the MS SQL server so normally uh when you interact with any database server your final objective is to find if there are some hard-coded credentials or hashes so you can use them to access other servers like ssh or you can uh, you know use them to further extend your privileges so uh, we're gonna get back to my notes and see what's next so next we're gonna retrieve the existing databases so i'm gonna copy the command right away from here And paste this so we're gonna replace the DB name the DB name is written here master so we're gonna type master I'm gonna remove the space okay so take a look at the statement select or the query select name from master DBO sys databases so this tells the SQL server please list me all of the database names so that's why we put name here because we're looking or we're after the names of the databases we hit enter and we see the sql server is telling us here we go the database names we have master timdb model msdb and orchard database uh, remember that in the notes it was talking about the orchard cms so we're going to focus the enumeration on orchard db so to use that database we're going to use orchard or type orchard use orchard db so now we switch the focus to orchard db and we can now start enumerating the columns and the tables remember that a table consists of rows and columns and for every record you have a row right and the columns represent the fields you have to remember that all the time so the first thing we have to retrieve what are the tables we know what are the tables and then we switch to the table in the table we see what are the columns and based on the columns we retrieve we decide which column or which are the records we need to uh, select from the database the first thing we have to find the tables 
So the table, let's see here. Yeah, that's the command. It's gonna take that. Ah, it's leaving counts from a table. Now we need to leave the tables actually. So that's the correct command. So based in that, so as you can see, selects asterisks from all everything from information schema to tables information schema. Why do we put information schema in here? The reason is that information schema contains information about the structure of all of the databases. So we, when we want to retrieve information about a specific database, we request that from the information schema, whether it be tables or columns. So enter. Now we have all of the tables in all of the databases. Specifically, since we are interacting with Orchard, we saw the tables in the Orchard database. So if we take a look at the data, uh, uh, tables, our job here is to define or uh, know what which one of these tables we need to enumerate further. So we see recent blog posts, not interested, archives, we need to focus on users. So let's see if we can find a table that contains information about users. So we scroll down, nothing about users until now. So we have table now as you can see orchard users user part record so we're gonna copy this one and now we're gonna retrieve the columns from this database so this is the command to select the columns from a specific table so select column name, all columns, right? From information schema columns, because as I said earlier, it contains structure about every database. And we have table name equal table name here. We put a table name. The table name is let's take a look again at the names of these tables. So we see but ah on the right. So part of the name is written on the right and the other part is written on the left so that's why the name didn't work so i'm going to copy blog orchard that's the correct name now scroll all the way down and try this let's see aha so now we got all the columns let's check out the columns so we have username email password so now we know what are the records to retrieve from this table now this table contains all of these columns for every column we have records so what we're going to do here we're going to select the username and password from this table so let's see uh yeah so we use this command username password from table name we specify the table name let's copy the table name make sure it's correct okay now i paste in the table name and pingo now we got the username admin and we got the username james now to save time the one that worked is james and their password this is actually not gonna work now we're gonna use this one guys to interact with what we explained earlier the vulnerability the pack vulnerability so that user james now okay uh, is actually a registered user in Windows Active Directory okay and the password here is actually the same password that James uses to log in to his account in the Active Directory domain and since we know that uh, the machine is vulnerable to back or privilege attribute certificate uh, vulnerability what we're gonna do now we're gonna try to exploit that okay so we're gonna exit from here and now to exploit that vulnerability as we said earlier we're gonna use a tool called golden pack so with golden pack we will generate a fake um, ticket okay uh, let me go to my active directory um, uh, notes see where they where is the way to exploit that so we're gonna scroll down of course you can't remember all the comments you're gonna have to store them somewhere Ah, here you go, the pack in Kirpros. Okay, so that's the command. We're gonna take that. Okay, let's dissect the command. The first thing is 
golden pack golden pack you can find that in impact tools the next thing is the domain controller ip address we've got the ip guys so the ip address was this one okay then the target ip i guess it's the same so paste dc domain name so we remember from the inmap scan the domain name was uh, it was http.local so we're gonna type here of course make sure you add this information or add the records on your host file else this one won't work and then we have the username the username is james we've got that and then the target computer name the computer name was mantis.htb.local all right now by hitting enter golden pack will generate a fake privilege attribute certificate that will tell the key or the kerberos distribution center that hey uh, this uh, pack uh, or james is actually an admin and he belongs to the administrator group please grant him access let's see now all right now the password so this is the password now the exploit or the pack is being generated as you can see let's let's check that admin attacking domain controller requesting shares found writable share so now now you may ask we may be asking why there is a mention about shares here well the exploit works this way when it generates the pack it first spawns um, with the credentials we have james and his password we are able to establish um an smb connection now from smb connection we spawn ps exec to uh retrieve a shell and now as you can see we are on the system so if we type who am i we are the net authority system so that is the way we exploit that vulnerability so if you are using windows server 2012 3 or 8 and you haven't updated your system to patch this make sure you update that this is a kind of reminder uh, but i wanted to explain that how it works using this machine so that was for today's video you will find all of the resources the urls the information about the vulnerability in the video description so see you in the next video guys